Hey everybody, welcome into the Fallout Shelter. Welcome you back in. Today we are going to go over quickly an old document from Harvard. Always Harvard, right? Uh, this is a document I found. It's from the absabsharvard.edu. It's an abstract or something I think it just means it's a short have to find the whole thing uh, somewhere else maybe but this is enough for right now I'm sure a lot of people already know about this so this is really for the the newbies I guess that are looking into this stuff I'm one of them I don't take anybody's word for anything I go start looking up the information and since I find it I'm gonna just put it out in a different manner uh, the title of this is stratospheric injection on reflective aerosols or particles by means of aviation fuel additives. Arthur's J. Gorman, uh, I don't really know the affiliation thing, publications American Geophysical Union, Fall Meeting 2007, Abstract ID GC33A0935, Publication Date 12, 2007, Aerosols and Particles. Various suggestions have been made for stratospheric aerosols or particles to simulate the observed cooling effect of major volcanic eruptions. The best known is the detailed proposal of Paul Crutzen for sulfur dioxide. Also extensively discussed is diatomaceous earth, injected as individual diatoms, silica particles originating as marine shells. This paper describes a selection and preliminary testing of chemicals that might be used as aviation fuel additives to distribute these two products sulfur dioxide and micron sized silica particles that's sand from a high flying commercial or military aircraft the two chemicals tested are dimethyl sulfide to produce sulfur dioxide and tetraethyl silicate to produce silica particles in a closed glass jar both of these chemicals are indistinguishable from jet aviation fuel both are clear colorless oily liquids both dissolve in aviation fuel in any proportion Solutions of each of these chemicals have been burned in a paraffin blow lamp as a simple simulation of a jet engine combustion chamber. Observations of the combustion suggest that the desired chemicals are produced and that the silica particles are of a smoke or mist micron size. Just water vapor, right? It is suggested that the solutions would probably have no detrimental effect on the fuel tanks, pipes, pumps, or combustion chambers of the jet engine. This paper includes general facts about jet engines, aviation fuel, aircraft fuel systems, and flight plans which may not be known to climate scientists. Also briefly considered are the health consequences of silica particles in the stratosphere. No tests have been done on a jet engine. Suggestions are made on that type of test that would need to be needed by an organization having engine static test facilities. So, there you have it. This was 2007. We're 12 years away from that. You can uh, you can imagine that uh, we've come quite a long way since then. If you don't believe it, look up. There's no telling what all's in there now. We know they're spraying us with aluminum and barium and strontium and sulfur dioxide and probably silicate particles now that I'm reading it. Because that makes sense. I mean, we're, we got the Sahara Desert blowing dust all the way into the United States, so why not spray it out of airplanes as well? If you enjoy this type of information, uh, click the buttons, do the things, all that comes with it. Uh, I appreciate all of the people who are supporting this, and uh, I hope you enjoy this information, and I hope it's, it's useful to you. Uh, Thank you, and God bless you, and have a wonderful day.